My brother Ferko and I board the seven o'clock train for Vienna and settle in a cold and empty compartment. We try to be inconspicuous and act like passengers accustomed to traveling, but I'm just 18, poor, unwashed, and unshaven. My pants are wrinkled, and I have a toothache. We left Romania two weeks ago, and this is the last step of our escape, getting from Bratislava in Czechoslovakia to Vienna in Austria. Our train starts off slowly, as if telling me that I must be patient. We check, we change tracks in a small deserted town with just a few snow-covered houses. Then we go ahead for a few minutes. Then back. Across from me, Ferko is reading calmly. He wet and combed his hair this morning in the bathroom. In his dark suit and barely wrinkled shirt, he looks as tall and handsome as ever. I settle down somehow, cuddle up in the corner, covering my face and my pain with a thick window curtain. Suddenly, voices awaken me. A tall guard dressed in a green uniform speaks to us. My brother hands both passports over. The guard has wide shoulders, light blue eyes, and a square, powerful jaw. He takes the documents and looks at them, page by page, examining them carefully. His face is frozen. He glances up, takes a step towards me, and moves the curtain that has been partly covering my face. I point to my swollen jaw. He just looks at me, then returns the passports to my brother and leaves the compartment with a short army salute. What's happening, I ask, trying to breathe again. Through the hall windows, I catch a glimpse of several armed guards going along the train with a huge German shepherd looking under it. Suddenly, I feel the jolt of the, of the train taking off. Through the window, the telephone poles are passing us, wires going up and down, up and down. I can hear the rhythm the rhythmic sound of the wheels beating like my heart. And all of a sudden, the realization comes to me. We must have crossed the border. Ferko's dear, familiar face slowly breaks into a smile, a huge smile. I stand up and hug him. We're laughing nervously, turning around on one spot like a slow top. A few moments pass. Then, I don't know what to do anymore. I look through the window hungry for a different landscape. I want to see something that tells me that I'm free, that a completely new life is starting for me. I see fields and fields covered in fresh snow, broken up every now and then by dark clumps of tr trees. Nothing looks different. Though, when I pay close attention, I notice that the houses in the distance are large. It doesn't make sense that country houses owned by peasants are several stories high. This is it. We are in Austria. A wave of well-being comes over me. I am 18, on the train to Vienna, and the world is opening up for me. Once there, I can do whatever I want. I can work, I can make lots of money, I can travel anywhere. Then. A new question creeps up. What exactly are we going to do in Vienna? It's the middle of January, we, do, we have very little money, and we don't know anyone. I look out the window, farmhouses, country roads, and cars. My tooth doesn't hurt anymore. We eat some stale bread and two apples. The combination tastes delicious. I think of Vienna, of being in the street and walking without any destination. Now I'm excited, and I don't want to fall asleep and miss anything. Ferko and I chat a little, but soon fall into a contented silence and let time go by as a monotonous landscape unrolls before our open eyes. <laughs> 